right, let's talk about it now with Ryan Anderson from the Heritage Foundation and Chad Griffin from the Human Rights Campaign. And Ryan, let me begin with you. What is the argument that you believe is going to convince Justice Kennedy to leave this to the states? Sure. I think if Justice Kennedy is going to rule consistently with what he said two years ago, he needs to say that the states have the authority to define marriage for themselves. Two years ago, when he struck down the federal definition of marriage, he said it was because the federal government was deviating from deference to state authority over marriage. Uh, this time around, I think he has to say that there's nothing in the U.S. Constitution that tells us what marriage is. There are good arguments on both sides. Some people have good arguments in favor of gay marriage, good arguments against gay marriage, good arguments to retain the traditional understanding of marriage. Equality alone doesn't settle that issue because all of us are in favor of marriage equality. We want the law to treat all marriages equally. The question is which vision of marriage is the truth? And nine unelected judges don't have any greater access at that than you, me, and Chad. Um, so I think Justice Kennedy is going to want to say that the people and their elected representatives working through the states should make marriage policy. Do you agree with that? I don't think you do. I, there's no question, George. Justice Scalia wrote in his dissent uh, in the Windsor case that the decision in Windsor was going to lead uh, to marriage equality across this country. And that's exactly what I believe uh, is going to happen. And I believe Justice Kennedy will author that opinion. You know, the other thing that Justice Kennedy... So you think he's going to go all the way and say there's a constitutional right? I, I do, George. First of all, 70% of Americans already live in states where we have marriage equality. Um, but the other thing that Justice Kennedy asked in oral arguments, but also in his decision, what about those thousands of children that today are already being raised by same-sex couples? More than 200,000 children uh, in this country today are being raised by same-sex parents. They deserve the same rights, protections as everyone else. That did seem to tug at Justice Kennedy. Sure, and I think we've seen this time around uh, voices from children of gays and lesbians on both sides of this debate. Uh, there are three different amicus briefs filed by the children of gay and lesbian couples saying, we love our two moms or our two dads. It wasn't the same thing as having a mom and a dad. Uh, and so we're the children of gays and lesbians who are against gay marriage. Uh, we've also seen gay and lesbian voices themselves uh, saying, I'm gay, but I'm against gay marriage. It's not as if uh, the LGBT community speaks in one voice on this issue. And I think Justice Kennedy is going to want to look at uh, how redefining marriage impacts everyone. Um, and I don't think he has a crystal ball to know whether or not it'll produce good outcomes or bad outcomes. So we leave it to the democratic process. There's no question that all of the science, dozens of scientific research, independent, peer-reviewed studies, says that there is no difference whether a child is raised by loving same-sex parents or opposite-sex parents. A child deserves loving parents. And according to the American Academy of Pediatrics, there is no difference. What well, happens, is, what, 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 let me, I want to move on to something else quickly here, because it, there does seem to be, most Supreme Court watchers do believe that Kennedy is likely to find some right uh, of gay marriage, although no, none of us can be sure. If that happens, where does the movement go next? Sure, I mean, I think if that happens, it would be repeating the mistake of Roe v. Wade. Forty-two years ago, the Supreme Court tried to settle the abortion issue, and for the past 40 years, we've been having a culture war. Nothing's more divisive in our politics today than abortion, because we can't make common sense compromises through the democratic process. Look at Europe. They, ha they don't have the March for Life every year like we do. They don't have the divisive abortion politics, because their courts didn't remove this issue from popular democracy. That's what needs to happen here. If it doesn't happen, I'm, I fear there's going to be a backlash. There'll be a culture war like there's been on the abortion issue. I, I, I want to move on to one, one other issue. We did see that interview with Bruce Jenner on, on Friday night. Chad Griffin, what do you think the impact is of this? And now that Bruce Jenner has to become the most famous transgender person in, in the world, is that good for the movement for those who want to support transgender rights? It was monumental. Look, anytime someone's willing to stand up and to come out and to share their story and to live their truth, it's a massive victory. But especially when that person is an American hero, is a superstar like Bruce Jenner, that's what changes hearts and minds all across this country. But what I hope it will also do is open Americans' eyes as to how we treat trans transgender people in this country today. And I hope it will move policymakers, Democrats and Republicans, to bring about the needed protections uh, that are so needed all across this country today. Your reaction? I think the very end of the Jenner interview was really interesting. He said that if his father was still alive, he would want his father to know that he loved him. And then he says we have to keep open hearts and open minds. And I think that's exactly right. Going forward, we need to hear voices like Bruce Jenner's. We also need to hear voices like Walt Heyer, a man who went through and had this sex reassignment surgery and it didn't solve his problems. We need to hear voices like Dr. Paul McHugh from Johns Hopkins Hospital, Johns Hopkins Medical School. He was the chair of psychiatry at Johns Hopkins where they decided to stop doing sex reassignment surgery. He came to the conclusion that it wasn't helping those patients. So I think the science is very unsettled on this. We need to welcome all voices to this debate. We need to listen and, to and it. And a very big debate has begun. Okay, thank you both.